Dear friends, in the earlier module, we have discussed the theoretical and computational aspects of transmission of electromagnetic power through closed cables or closed wires. How to transmit the power in a medium which is bounded by some conductors? Can we guide the electromagnetic energy that is wave in some particular direction? Can we transmit a very high power over a short distance or over a long distance without much loss? These are some other aspects of transportation or transmission of electromagnetic energy. So, in this module, we are going to study about the systems which can transmit electromagnetic power through close boundaries that is the systems which can guide the wave in the desired direction. These systems are known in the literature as electromagnetic wave guides. So, without entering into the mathematical aspects, we will discuss qualitatively about such wave guides in this model. After completing this module, you will be able to understand the concept of electromagnetic wave guide and its different types. Also, you will be know about the terminology of wave guides and the concept of multimode transmission of electromagnetic energy. In addition, you will be able to know about the applications of wave guides. We know that wave propagation implies propagation or transport of energy. An electromagnetic wave carries electromagnetic energy which can be used for various useful applications. The electromagnetic energy carried by the wave can be directed in the desired direction using devices known as waveguides. What is waveguide? The answer is simple. The waveguide is an assembly of reflecting surfaces or a structure used to guide the wave in the desired direction. Depending upon the type of wave, we can name the waveguide. For example, we can have acoustical waveguides to guide the sound waves in the desired direction. What can be the assembly in acoustical waveguide? Let us suppose that we want to call a person who is at considerable distance from us. What we can do? We put the two palms of our hand close to the mouth and call the person loudly in the desired direction. Such an arrangement of two palms is nothing but a crude form of an acoustical waveguide. We are familiar with different acoustical instruments, trumpet or horn for example, used as an acoustical waveguide. In this module, we will discuss mainly the electromagnetic waveguides. The first structure for guiding waves was proposed by J. J. Thomson in 1893 and was first experimentally tested by Oliver Lodge in 1894. The first mathematical analysis of electromagnetic waves in a metal cylinder was performed by Lord Rayleigh in 1897. The waveguides may be air filled or can have some other dielectric. Rayleigh, Sommerfield and Debye studying are famous for their pioneering and prominent work of dielectric waveguides such as optical fibers at around year 1920. Due to rapid growth in communication industries, study of optical fibers as waveguides for several applications started at around 1960. Waveguides in general are very useful for diversified applications in many fields such as domestic, military, medical, etc. For example, waveguides are used in transmitting power between the components of a system such as radio, radar or optical devices. Waveguides provide the fundamental principle of guided wave testing that is GWT which is one of the many methods of non-destructive evaluation. Medical stethoscope is nothing but an acoustical waveguide. Waveguides are used in scientific instruments to measure optical, acoustical and elastical properties of materials and objects. 
Everyone is aware of the term sonography, which means actually medical ultrasonography. Optical fibers are used to transmit electromagnetic signals, including light, over considerably long distances with high speed. Microwave oven does not need any introduction. It is a waveguide in which power generated by the magnetron is transferred to the cooking chamber. In a military radar, which is an important application of electromagnetic waveguides, the waveguide transfers radio frequency energy to and from the antenna. A waveguide in two dimensions, called as a strip line, can be developed on a printed circuit board or transmitting microwave signals on the board. Waveguides are used in scientific instruments to measure optical, acoustical, and elastic properties of materials and objects. Waveguides of different types have been described in literature. Some of the examples are as shown. Electromagnetic waveguides, in principle, can be constructed to carry electromagnetic waves over a wide portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. However, they are especially useful in the microwave and optical frequency ranges. Conducting or dielectric materials are used for the construction of these waveguides depending on the frequency. These waveguides are used for electromagnetic power transfer as well as transfer of communication signals. One more important application of electromagnetic waveguides is a radar that is radio detection and radiation. The electromagnetic waveguides operate over a range of microwave frequencies. The term microwave is used for wavelengths ranging approximately from 30 cm to 1 mm, that is from 1 GHz to 300 GHz. However, this range is observed to have undergone several revisions. After continuous process of revision from time to time, the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, abbreviated as IEEE, recommended the new designation of microwave bands comprising of HF that is high frequency, VHF very high frequency, UHF ultra high frequency and bands designated as L, S, C, X, K, U, etc. as shown. Besides this, we can find military microwave bands designated as A, B, C, D, E, F, G or bands designated as P band, L band, S band, etc. documented in literature. We are familiar with many devices using optical fibers as optical waveguides. These are the waveguides used at optical frequencies. In its construction, a metal with lower permittivity surrounding a dielectric material with high refract index is used. Optical waves are guided following the phenomena of total internal reflection. Several other mechanisms exist for guiding optical signals. Photonic crystal fiber is one of such example. For illumination applications, guides incorporating the phenomena of Bragg reflection in the form of a hollow tube with a highly reflective inner surface are used. The inner surfaces may be polished metal or may be covered with a multi-layer film that guides light by Bragg reflection. What is the principle of operation of electromagnetic waveguides? Consider a point source of waves. The waves in open space will move radially out in all possible directions and power associated with the electromagnetic wave falls off as square of the distance. However, the spherical waves can be made to propagate in the desired direction with the help of suitable arrangement of reflecting surfaces of the waveguide. The arrangement in the waveguide is made in such a way that the signal propagates through the waveguide with minimal loss of energy. We have seen different types of waveguides as per the type of wave. The waveguides can be classified as per the geometry also. 
Accordingly, we have rectangular and cylindrical that is also called as circular waveguides as the main types of waveguides. Cylindrical or circular waveguides are used for high frequency radio waves. Slab waveguides confine the propagation of wave in one dimension, while fiber or channel waveguides confine the propagation of waves in two dimensions. Is there any limitation or specific range of frequency for a particular type of waveguide? The answer is assertive. As an example, circular waveguides are used for high frequency radio waves. Optical fibers are used for guiding high frequency light. However, it is not able to guide microwaves of much lower frequency. The geometry of the waveguide decides the lower limit on the frequency of guided waves. Loosely speaking, the wavelength of the guided wave and the width of a waveguide should be of the same order of magnitude. For different types of waveguides, we can derive the relations for limits on frequency of the wave involving geometrical parameters of the waveguide. Let us try to understand the meaning of some important terms which we usually come across in the study of waveguides. Let us not discuss about how the related expressions are mathematically derived. We know that electromagnetic energy propagates in the form of electromagnetic waves. The propagation of electromagnetic energy can be determined in terms of the pointing vector S bar given by the expression as shown. Pointing vector S bar represents the amount of electromagnetic energy flowing through unit area per second. The electric field vector E and the magnetic field vector H can be obtained by solving the wave equations for E and H vectors. In one of the earlier modules, we have derived these equations which are as shown. Solving these two equations with the given boundary conditions, we can determine E and H vectors. As the electromagnetic wave propagates through a medium, its phase continuously changes. If there is no opposition by the medium, no energy is lost and hence the amplitude of the field vectors remains constant. However, while propagating through a resistive medium, some part of the energy may be lost due to resistance of the medium or the inner surfaces of the waveguide. In effect, the amplitude of the field vectors will be attenuated. Propagation of electromagnetic wave through a medium is characterized by propagation constant gamma expressed as gamma is equal to alpha plus or minus j beta where alpha is the attenuation constant and beta is the phase constant. For lossless propagation, alpha is zero. Non-zero value of beta implies propagating wave while stationary wave is characterized by beta equal to zero. In general, gamma is complex and depends upon frequency of the electromagnetic wave. Multimode transmission is the characteristic feature of waveguides. Electromagnetic energy can be transmitted through the waveguide in different modes, namely TEMN, TMMN and TEMNP, where MNP are positive integers. TE, TM, TEM refer to transverse electric, transverse magnetic and transverse electromagnetic wave respectively. Let us revise our knowledge about the meaning of these terms. If the direction of oscillation of E is always perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the wave, then the mode of propagation is called as TE mode. If the direction of oscillation of H is always perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the wave, then the mode of propagation is called as TM mode. If the direction of oscillation of E and H both are perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the wave, then the mode of propagation is called as TEM mode. The number of half oscillations of the electric and magnetic field vector over the same time period are indicated by the integers m and n respectively and according to this designation of the mode is decided. 
For example, in the case of rectangular waveguide of width A and height B, if the number of oscillations, rather number of half oscillations completed by the component of E wave or H wave over the width A or M and in the same time interval, the number of half oscillations completed by component of H wave or E wave in the vertical direction that is over the height B or N, then the corresponding mode is denoted by TEMN or TMMN mode respectively as the case may be. Thus, we can have T11, T10, T21, T20, TM10, TM11, etc. Various modes described above are expected to be propagated through the waveguide without attenuation. So far, we are discussing about different types of modes such as TEMN, TMMN, etc. How these modes are actually excited in the waveguide? This question is obvious and bound to occur in our mind. Antennas radiating microwave frequencies are used for this purpose. The location of the radiating end called as antenna probe in the waveguide determines the mode of excitation of electromagnetic wave. Similar arrangements of antenna obeying the reciprocity principle can serve the purpose of accepting the electromagnetic wave at the receiving end of the waveguide. The precise position and proper phase difference are the prominent factors deciding the quality of excitation of the mode. As an example, see how TE10 mode is excited in the rectangular waveguide using a coaxial line. As an example of TM mode, see how TM11 mode is excited in the rectangular waveguide using a coaxial line. In the case of a circular waveguide, the TM01 mode can be excited as shown. It be remembered that while connecting waveguide to the source of microwaves using a coaxial cable, it is necessary to use a device such as a stub around a junction to minimize the loss of transmitted power arising due to discontinuity at the junction. We have discussed about such losses in one of the earlier modules on transmission lines. One of the important aspects associated with electromagnetic waveguides are the patterns of E and H fields corresponding to different modes propagating through the waveguide. We can plot such patterns using the mathematical expressions for components of E and H for the desired mode. Two views namely vertical cross-sectional and longitudinal that is along the length of the waveguide are generally considered for such plots. As an example, see some of the field patterns for TE10 mode in the rectangular waveguide. Field patterns for TE11 mode in the case of a circular waveguide are as shown. Well friends, you will ask the question, is there any limitation on the frequency of electromagnetic wave? to be transmitted through waveguide? The question is obvious and the answer is yes. We cannot trans transmit all the electromagnetic waves through the waveguide. There is some limitation. The quantity called as cutoff frequency puts such limitations. If the frequency of the electromagnetic wave is less than some particular frequency known as cutoff frequency of the waveguide, then that signal or that wave cannot propagate through the waveguide. If the frequency is above that cutoff frequency, then only that signal can pass through the waveguide. Secondly, the cutoff frequency depends upon various parameters such as the mode whether it is T or TM, then the mode numbers M, N, P which are the integers. Similarly, the cutoff frequency depends upon the waveguide dimensions as well. So, we are going to discuss qualitatively about these things. Can two modes have same frequency? That is also a question. So, let us discuss something about it. The cutoff frequency for a given mode in a circular waveguide varies inversely with its inner radius. Such simple relationship does not exist 
in the case of a rectangular waveguide. Rather, we can simply say that the cutoff frequency for a given mode propagating through a rectangular waveguide depends upon its physical dimensions. Two or more modes having the same cutoff frequency are known as degenerate modes. The total number of modes having same cutoff frequency is called as the degeneracy. In the case of a rectangular waveguide, TMN and TMMN modes are degenerate. Also, in the case of a square waveguide with the same magnitude of height and width, TMN, TENM, TMMN and TMNM modes are degenerate. The expressions for cutoff frequency corresponding to a particular mode for a given type of waveguide in terms of geometrical parameters of the guide can be derived mathematically. For example, the cutoff frequency of a TEMN mode in the case of a rectangular waveguide is given by the expression as shown. Here, the geometrical parameters A, B represent the width and height of the waveguide. The cutoff frequency for a TNP mode in the case of a circular waveguide of inner radius A is given by the expression as shown. Here, Kc is the cutoff wave number and H dash NP is the pith 0 of Zn dash of Kc A equal to 0. Here, Zn dash of Kc A is the first derivative for a special function known as Bessel function of first kind. The function Zn dash Kca becomes 0 for infinite values of Kca. For example, for n equal to 3, the first 0 that is p equal to 1 of Zn dash Kca is located at Kca approximately equal to 4.201. Thus, we have x dash 3 1 is approximately equal to 4.201. We will discuss about it in more detail in the next module. The wave number k in general is related to frequency through various relations as shown. We obtain k in terms of the electromagnetic constants of the medium as well as the frequency. Suffix c or g with k can be used to represent k at cutoff or k of electromagnetic wave while propagating through the waveguide. The cutoff frequency for a given waveguide corresponding to a given mode puts a limit on the range of frequencies allowed by the waveguide. For example, for a certain rectangular waveguide, if the cutoff frequency for a T10 mode is 6.6 .6 GHz and the cutoff frequency for T20 mode is about 13 gigahertz, then we understand that no e electromagnetic wave with frequency between 8 to 12 gigahertz can be passed through the waveguide in T20 mode. Rather, the electromagnetic waves in this range can be passed only in T10 mode. Let us assume that cutoff frequency for TM11 mode for this waveguide is 16.16 .16 gigahertz, then we can infer that electromagnetic wave with frequency between 8 to 12 gigahertz cannot be propagated in electromagnetic mode through this rectangular waveguide. The frequency range from 8 gigahertz to about 12 gigahertz is known as X band. Besides circular waveguides, we can have many other types such as elliptical and reentrant waveguides which allow propagation of electromagnetic waves through them. A single conducting plane or a system of two parallel planes can also serve the purpose of electromagnetic waveguides. Propagation of electromagnetic wave for such waveguides can be discussed theoretically to obtain results similar to rectangular and circular waveguides. For example, the expression for cutoff frequency in the case of a parallel plane waveguide with plate separation D is given by the expression as shown. Can any mode of propagation pass through any type of waveguide? No, it is not the case. Dear friends, 
you should note some facts about this aspect. Any metallic hollow shaped waveguide cannot propagate TEM modes irrespective of their shape such as rectangular, circular, elliptical etc. This is simply because at least two conductors are needed for a TEM mode. Secondly, TEM mode can be supported by waveguides such as coaxial cable, parallel plate waveguide and the planar structure such as striplins and micro striplins for example. Phase constant beta specifies the state of propagation of electromagnetic wave. Non-zero value of beta represents the progressive wave. Zero value of beta on the other hand represents the non-progressive or stationary wave. The expression for the phase constant beta g in the waveguide corresponding to a given type of mode for a given type of waveguide can also be expressed in terms of cutoff frequency. For example, the phase constant beta g for a TEMN mode in the case of a rectangular waveguide is given by the expression as shown. Similarly, the expression for the phase constant beta g in the circular waveguide corresponding to a given type of mode for a given type of waveguide can also be expressed in terms of its cutoff frequency. For example, the phase constant beta g for a TENP mode in the case of a circular waveguide of inner radius A is given by the expression as shown. When an electromagnetic wave is propagating through an unbounded medium, its phase velocity Vp is given by the expression Vp equal to 1 upon under root mu epsilon. For free space, Vp is 3 into 10 to 8 meter per second. However, when the same wave tries to propagate through a bounded medium such as a rectangular or circular waveguide, its phase velocity changes. Similar to the phase constant beta g, the phase velocity of the wave also depends upon the mode and type of waveguide. For example, in the case of a rectangular waveguide, the phase velocity vg in the direction of propagation of the wave through the rectangular waveguide for the TEM mode is given by the expression as shown. When an electromagnetic wave is propagating through a given medium, the medium due to its intrinsic electromagnetic properties mu and epsilon opposes the motion of the wave. The opposition by the medium to the wave is called as the characteristic impedance of the medium. In the case of an unbounded medium, Z is denoted by eta and it is given by eta equal to under root mu upon epsilon. If the medium is a free space, eta equal to eta 0 that is equal to 377 ohm approximately. When an electromagnetic wave is propagating through a bounded medium of the waveguide, the wave experiences an opposition. This opposition known as characteristic guide impedance is denoted by Zg. It depends upon the dielectric medium, guide geometry and frequency of the electromagnetic wave. For example, in the case of TEMN mode propagating through a rectangular waveguide, Zg is given by the expression as shown. The waveguides are used to transmit large amount of electromagnetic power through them. The conducting walls and the dielectric, if any, of the guide cause loss of electromagnetic power. Thus, there are two types of losses, namely losses in the dielectric and losses in the conducting walls. Attenuation constant alpha accounts for the loss of power during propagation. When a plane wave is propagating in a bounded low loss dielectric in the rectangular waveguide, it can be shown that the attenuation constant alpha g in the guide depends upon the frequency of the wave and the conductivity of the dielectric. For low frequencies, alpha g is greater for TMN mode as compared to TMMN mode for the same waveguide. The attenuation constant alpha g is related to the power lost and the power transmitted through the relation alpha g equal to PL upon 2 times PTR. Thus, the greater the attenuation constant, the more is the power loss. While propagating, the electromagnetic wave gets reflected 
from the surface of the conducting walls of the waveguide. The wave penetrates through the walls and suffers a loss of power. The quantity skin depth delta accounts for the depth of penetration. Thus, the other type of power loss is due to conducting walls of the guide. It is accounted for in terms of a physical quantity known as surface resistance Rs. The larger the value of surface resistance, the greater is the power loss. Surface resistance is related with the skin depth delta, conductivity sigma of the metallic wall and the frequency f of the electromagnetic waves through the relation as shown. Clearly, for larger frequencies, the skin depth delta is smaller giving rise to a large value of surface resistance Rs implying thereby greater power loss. Power losses in the case of circular waveguides can be determined on similar lines. We generally discuss waveguides more theoretically. However, it is better to obtain information about some practical aspects associated with waveguides. For example, in practice at super high frequencies, action of waveguides is similar to cables. Hence, a single mode transmission instead of multi modes is preferred. Rectangular waveguides have a much larger bandwidth over which only a single mode can propagate. Generally, the waveguide height is half the waveguide width so as to maximize the power transfer with due consideration of breakdown limit of the dielectric in the waveguide. The upper and lower limits on the band of frequencies allowed for a particular mode is selected by noting cutoff frequency of the present and the next higher mo order mode. Such limits are selected so as to account for dispersion, loss per unit length, etc. One should review such literature giving information about technical details regarding waveguides along with their theoretical study. Standard tables giving information about standard characteristics of rectangular and circular waveguides as per the Electrical Standard Association abbreviated as ESA are available in literature. These tables include the standard guide dimensions such as inner and outer width and height in the case of rectangular waveguides, inner radius of circular waveguides in centimeter as well as in inches, the cutoff frequency for air filled waveguides and the recommended range of frequency operation for a particular mode. As an example, see one of such entries in the case of a rectangular waveguide as shown. It can be inferred that with a decrease in the physical dimensions, the cutoff frequency increases. Similarly, as an example in the case of a circular waveguide, we see one of such entries as shown. It can be inferred that as the inside diameter increases, the cutoff frequency decreases. One should have knowledge about such technical and instrumental details at least at an informative level. Friends, we can go on discussing many points one after the other. For example, one may ask how to store, split or divert a fraction of the electromagnetic power carried by the wave. Can we not convert TMN mode into TMMN mode or vice versa? What are the properties of the materials used in fabrication of waveguides? What is the mathematical basis of the waveguides? So on and so forth. However, we have to stop somewhere due to time limitations. We will discuss about such issues in the subsequent modules. For the time being, let us have a stop here. As a summary, we may remember that a close assembly of conductors is known as a waveguide which can guide the electromagnetic waves in a particular direction. Cutoff frequency puts a limit on the frequency of the wave to be propagated through the waveguide. Multimode transmission is a special feature of electromagnetic waveguides. Then the conducting walls of the conductor and the dielectric in the waveguide cause some losses of power. The 
electromagnetic waveguides are of different types depending upon the energy of transmission we can have different shapes cylindrical waveguides rectangular waveguides these are some of the different types of waveguides which are generally used for this transmission of electromagnetic power t and tm modes can be propagated through all the waveguides but tem mode cannot be propagated through a close waveguides thank you